you know what it takes to be number one. At State Farm, so do we. The first time I went, uh, the summer before college, we were only there a week and it just wasn't enough and it was obvious to, to our host. So they left the invitation to, to come back whenever we'd liked. I wanted more experience in the hospital. I wanted more um, experience using the language because I'm a Spanish minor. And the opportunity was open. I asked them via email and it was pretty simple. They said, give us a date and a time and we'd be happy to see you. I caught a, caught a flight from Newark, New Jersey to like straight to Honduras. You have to go through one of the largest cities called, called San Pedro Sula. I caught a small flight to La Ceiba, and from there it's about an hour drive into the boonies and you're there. Our host's home was built almost on the side of this hill and it's very nice you look out um, towards the coastal side. So it's built on the side of a mountain you can kind of view out to the coast. And then underneath is the town. The village is Belfate. And it's basically one road, there's maybe 30 houses on it, and of course, right, almost right smack in the middle is the uh, soccer field. Our host is a family that have been down there for eight years. And the, the father of the family is a family or uh, primary physician, family physician. And I would spend the first half of my day shadowing him in the local, in the missionary hospital. One of the missions of the hospital was to provide care that you could find in America. And that's pretty much what they provided. I was pretty amazed too because I've worked in very sanitary hospitals, you know, here in the United States and seen those conditions. And it's not much different. They were able to get the equipment donated. I mean, some of it's obviously not the best equipment, such as they don't have an MRI, but they have an x-ray machine. It's really good facilities. The biggest difference I'd probably say is from where the people come from. They, they're traveling from three hours away, they're traveling on foot, they maybe, if they're lucky, they catch the bus. My mother's a social worker and my father's a doctor, so both um, very service-oriented professions. Even in high school, uh, doing community service and things, I had a completely different idea of it. After my brother died, it kind of really, it really hit me how, how privileged I actually was and I was more aware of the struggles that other people are going through. Some things that I was able to do was basically kind of scrub in and assist the doctor if he had to do any type of minor surgeries. For example, a young boy stepped on, I think maybe it was a, a, a nail or a piece of glass that was, all, that was pretty far into his foot and we had to numb the area and you know, handing the doctor certain mat uh, materials or holding, holding the body in a position that is easier to work with. I got to put on some casts of children that kind of fell and needed to get a cast put on. But most of the time I was basically just watching and observing. I plan to be a doctor and there's obviously going to be money to be made in that profession and very good, a very good living associated with it, but that doesn't mean that I have to have a very good living. I'm not afraid to go to a third world country and spend a big chunk of my time, you know, just going where I'm needed or where medical services are needed. It's just so humbling to kind of, to go down there and see, it's just completely different. You, you don't really have that kind of experience or perspective until you, until you see it yourself.